Are you looking to migrate from PostgreSQL to Azure Database for PostgreSQL in Azure? In this episode, we're going to talk all about how you can do that with the new Azure Postgres migration extension in Azure Data Studio. You'll see how to do it, how to use it, how it can assess your databases and give you insights and warnings on how to fix anything before you migrate, and then how you can use Azure DMS to do the migration. Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we're going to be talking about some interesting updates in the migration and Azure Data Studio space. Uh, joining me today is Aditya. Aditya, thanks so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Hi, Anna. Uh, thanks for uh, letting me in Data Exposed. So I am uh, the product manager uh, working in migration and modernization space, looking at uh, helping the customers migration, uh, migrating their Postgres SQL workloads into Azure. Awesome, cool. So, so you seem like the right person to talk to when it comes to the Postgres migration extension. And can you tell us a little bit, you know, what that's all about? Yeah, let me show you. Uh, the uh, one of the slides uh, what I have prepared for uh, PostgreSQL extension. So as your data, uh, as your PostgreSQL migration extension in is present in Azure Data Studio, which helps the customers or users to determine their migration readiness of their source PostgreSQL instances before they migrate into uh, Azure Database for Postgres Flexible Server, and it also provides you the SKU recommendation that what is the optimal SKU that uh, customers have to be cre uh, creating in the flexible server uh, from uh, based on the performance metrics of the source. So let me go uh, to the next uh, screen where it shows that uh, how we do an integrated assessment using the extension where uh, we identify what are the uh, my, uh, readiness of the databases, whether it is not ready, ready, or ready with conditions. And be, uh, uh, based on those conditions, we uh, users can determine whether uh, the database can be migrated into Azure Database for PostgreSQL. And as well as uh, users can determine uh, what is the SKU uh, is required uh, in the Azure Database for Postgres to be created so that they can migrate their on-premise po uh, Postgres workloads into Azure. And uh, ADS is a platform being used, as your data studio, I mean, because it is uh, simple to use, free of cost, and it is a cross-platform desktop tool with responsive UI. Let awesome. me, uh, uh, can I show you uh, the demo? Uh, yeah, I'd love to take a look at the demo. And while you're switching over to that, I also just had a quick question. Is this a separate extension than the Postgres extension, or is it the same extension, or how do I get it? Yeah, Azure Data Studio extension is completely different uh, from PostgreSQL extension. Azure Data extension, Azure Data Studio extension can be downloaded from the marketplace, and users can use those extension for different purposes within Azure Data Studio. But it is not same as PostgreSQL extension. Got it. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. Let's take a look. So uh, this is the Azure Data Studio uh, screen where we can see uh, I have connected to one of the source PostgreSQL instances. And uh, within the PostgreSQL instances, I have already installed an extension uh, named Azure PostgreSQL Migration Extension. When I click on that, uh, users can click on Run New Assessment, where uh, it will ask for uh, the databases which we want to assess. So in this example, I am going to uh, select all the databases, click on Next. Now the user has the different options, that is whether ADS can perf uh, collect the performance data automatically, for the PostgreSQL instances, or user has the choice to manually enter those performance data parameters. In this example, I am going to uh, select the time duration of two hours, and I am asking the system to uh, gather the performance metrics for two hours. And I click on Assess, and the, it will uh, try to assess all the databases. And in this example, we can see that the SKU recommendation is taking place uh, because we have given two hours time to determine the SKU. And below is the assessment summary, where we can see that 
out of eight databases, one database is not in not ready state. That means it cannot be migrated into Azure database for PostgreSQL. Seven databases are ready with conditions. That means users can uh, follow the remediation action and can uh, migrate th their databases into a, a Postgres flexible server. And also on, uh, in the between, you can see uh, the assessment report uh, showcase all the different features available in the flexible server, as well as the server parameter settings, which determine what are the different server parameters which are not matching with the Postgres SQL flexible mm. server. Along with that, you have databases. Like for example, if I click on payment app database, I can see that this is not in ready state because there are few extensions like admin pack, which is not supported by a Postgres SQL flexible server. And this extension cannot be migrated into a flexible server. As well as we can see some warnings like collisions where there is a version mismatch between the source and the target. That's why it is showing as warning. Even for similar to other databases as well, we can see different warnings for the collisions where the there is a version mismatch. And the users have to take some recommendations, perform some recommendations to ensure that their data is intact and the migration is successful between the source and target. So this is all about the assessment. While we wait for, uh, I have already uh, determined the SKU for two hours, and this is how the SKU recommendation looks like once the two hours has been completed. For here, I have not run ran any workloads in my source instances. That's why it, it is showing one V course, two GB RAM and 32 GB uh, storage. And we can see all the details here. What is the recommendation reason uh, why uh, it has uh, selected one V core or one GB, uh, 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 sorry, two GB RAM, etc. As well as we can see the source properties. What was the source properties, the actual and the used V cores, used memories and actual memory everything in uh, in this recommendations uh, details panel. Wow, this is awesome. I mean, just to kind of summarize what I saw, we saw a way to assess all of our databases in a Postgres instance, not only kind of assess like what's going to work, but also see warnings for things that might not work or our mismatches and not just the warnings, but also here's what to do to fix it or here's our recommendation. So that's awesome. And then it's also cool uh, this automatic performance collection that you showed us, it's actually monitoring the workload for whatever time you put into it and then recommending uh, what size. So you're already being right size and prepared with things that might work or might not work. Uh, really helps yes. you get ready for a migration. Um, but when it comes to actually doing the migration, what would be the next step? So for doing the migrations, uh... We have, uh, we recommend users uh, these four steps. First, we ask users to perform the assessment uh, for their source PostgreSQL instances, understand whether the databases can be migrated, whether the instance is in ready or uh, not ready state. And once the assessment is completed, users can migrate their schema using PG dump. Uh, and after migration is uh, migration of schema is successful, then users can use database migration services for migration of their PostgreSQL workloads into Azure Database for Postgres. Once the migration is successful, that is the initial load and the change uh, data, then users can perform the cutover whenever they are ready. Awesome, cool. Well, thanks so much, Aditya, for coming on and showing us this and teaching us about migrating with the Azure Migration Extension for Postgres in Azure Data Studio. Super exciting. I believe currently this is in preview. So to all our viewers, go check this out, get the extension, try it out, and uh, let us know what you think. Give us some feedback. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on this episode. We'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. And once again, thanks, Adia. Thanks to our users. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Anna.